You need more, you need more script cards? Nope, I got it. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, this is Eric and Josh coming from the Drop TV here at Metal Ridge Archery and Gun. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be going over today the US Optic TS-12X. Uh, so we've had the opportunity to run this optic over the last couple of weeks on the uh, black collar arm spork sword build, uh, the 10 and a half configura uh, inch configuration and the 308. We're going to be going over the gun as well as the optic here in just a minute, but first of all, we really just wanted to go over kind of the packaging, which you're going to get in the actual uh, optic when you receive it. Talk about the goods, about the scope and what we've experienced and uh, kind of all the pluses about it and what we like about it from a hunting platform, uh, as well as kind of we've actually shot this out to 500 yards as of right now, and so I guess you could call it like a mid-range. Uh, it's a long-distance gun. So anyways, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at this first. So. This is the package you're going to be receiving from USO, uh, very similar to what you're going to see in their high-end optics. Some of their stuff, you know, goes for th two, three, four times the amount that this actual optic's coming in for. Um, so I want to say it's a sub-$600 optic. Yeah, I'm almost positive that's what you're going to be able to find it on the market as. MSRP, I think, is in the 580-ish range. I could be wrong, but it's right up in that range. Uh, for this particular one. So what you're going to get is a really, really awesome package right out the gate. I'm real weird about this stuff, so I really like packaging. It uh, speaks a lot to me as far as just like overall, just, I don't know, devil's in the details. So what you're going to get when you open up the USO Optic box here, get you a cool little decal, throw it on whatever you want to throw it on. Owner's manual, which is always good to have. You can take a look at that information there. Uh, but what I really liked was this portion right here. So what you're going to receive, just like what you get on uh, their more expensive optics, is you're going to receive a, a, a checklist where they somebody signs off and goes through this tooth and nail, looks at every aspect of the optic and checks and makes sure everything is down to the details and make, and, uh, and perfected. So uh, some of the stuff that they look on here for is just like the uh, the turrets, the clarity of the glass, or a reticle, parallax adjustment, how smooth the transitions are, and so on and so forth. So anyways, really cool, nice little touch. Um, that way you know that you got a good optic right out the gate because they've already done all the all the test work behind it. So let's get into the scope. So what you're going to get too is uh, you're not just going to get some bubble wrap crap in here with your scope bouncing around. It's a really, really nice like fitted system. I mean, it's so funny, but it's like custom cut styrofoam in this yeah, thing. It fits perfectly in there. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, that's kind of give you an idea what that's looking like in there. So really cool packaging, very secure. On this particular one, it does have a... The kill flash that is what we're running on that system as well. Great for just cutting down some of the sun and glare, as well as a little flip-up cap in the back. So same exact system as what you're looking at right here. So one thing that I've liked about the scope the most uh, from a hunting application and from a long-distance shooting application, and you can speak to this as well, for me is the locking turret. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so it's really clean. It's not really spongy. Some of the other systems we've ran have, have been a real spongy uh, turret clicks, but these are very clear. It's locking turrets, like you said. So you don't have that guesswork. So every time you get that click, you know exactly where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Very audible and tactile. Uh, so yeah, exactly. Some of the things that we've seen on uh, other optics, even similar price points, like the uh, it's the Vortex Diamondback. Yep. Tactical. Diamondback tactical. Yeah. yeah. First focal plane, and the same as this, it's also a first focal plane scope. Uh, but what I do like about the USO optic above the Vortex is definitely the turret yeah, by absolutely. far. Um, the fact that we can still use this in a hunting application because we can lock this down and have all the confidence in the world we're not going to run into a tree branch or scrape it up on something, you know, and then turn those turrets. And when you go to take that shot at that really big buck or big elk, you know, that you're now off and all your adjustments are, you know, messed up. So basically that's for, for us, that's like one of the big, big, big pluses about this particular system. Uh, the other thing I really like is it is 30 millimeter. Yep. So getting a lot of light into it. And I know there's... Some people say that that has nothing to do with it. There's a lot of different variation as far as turret adjustments and that and stuff as well. But it's just nice having such a compact little bitty scope uh, still running at 30 mil millimeter housing. So um, also two magnifications, pretty great. Yeah, that's, three to kind of, 12. that's what I was going to touch on for a hunting platform. It's three to 12. I mean, 12 is going to be plenty for anything we do here in Texas as far as hunting. You could take it out, elk hunting, still going to be effective. Uh, and being that it's only three to twelve, like Eric said earlier, we shot it out to five hundred yards without any problem. So, yeah. uh, so it's great. Yeah. And what I, what I also like about the optic is it because it is for first focal plane. 
all of your holdovers, every single, no matter if you're at 3x, 6x, 10x, 12x, it doesn't really matter. Because it's first focal plane, every single time, those uh, the reticles is right where it needs to be. So all your holdover adjustments are going to always be the same. Instead, on like second focal plane scopes, you know, whatever you adjust or sighted it in at, you have to be at that adjustment. Yeah. So you have to be at the max of 12x or, or 10x, whatever you set it to, in order for those holdovers to actually work. Um, so that's something that's awesome. Another great thing about the system is the parallax adjustment. It goes below 10 yards. So there's not a shot that you can that you're not going to be able to make as far as close up and distance where you can get your parallax to get everything lined up and make a clear you know shot. So I mean, out here in East Texas, I mean, a lot of times we have sub 50 yard shots yeah. all the time. When you're up in a tree stand, you might have a buck that walks directly underneath you. Um, so having that ability is is, uh, is is really really important to us as well. So. Um, I'm trying to think of what else to kind of touch on. There is multiple reticles that are available. Um, this one right here is, I believe they call their MHR. So, and um, it's kind of their hunter reticle. Uh, it's got a very fine dot in the middle, which I like yeah, uh, for I love pinpoint accuracy. We actually shot this at a steel popper yesterday. We shot two rounds, both impacts on a three inch popper at five, uh, 500 yards. So it's great, crazy accurate. We'll post that video here pretty quick and, uh, and showcase to you guys kind of the accuracy we're getting out of the system. but. We wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for a good optic. And uh, on that particular one, we shot it the first time utilizing the holdovers uh, and shot great. Like I said, we hit the popper. The second time we made the adjustments just to see uh, kind of what that MRAD adjustment would look like and how those how that turret felt, locked it down. Very next one was dead center. So um, anyways, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can contact any of the people at Metal Ridge Archery and Gun here in Nacogdoches, Texas. Uh, if, if you have any questions, they can get you one here pretty quick and if not you can go ahead and take a look at USO optics if you want to see some of their other models that may fit your system or what you're trying to run that might be a little different than this they do have a really nice like mid-level line that's kind of coming yeah. up to the market really here of late and uh, it's it's a it's it's a lot of bang for the buck a lot of bang for the buck so yeah. any closing remarks no uh, I guess just to really reiterate what we were saying about the turrets and the ability of it locking and tracking so true to exactly what we wanted. We were shooting out to 500 and then we would step into 100 and we would shoot three round groups and we'd see how the accuracy was really holding true. And then within uh, the same breath, we were shooting it back out at 500 yards and just the ability that this, this scope has to track is just phenomenal. Yeah. You know, one thing that you playing around with and stuff like that, it's incredibly light. Oh, yeah, super light. It's unbelievably that, that's light. That's why it's perfect for a hunting platform because it's so light and you have the ability to step it out to 500 or shoot it at 50 like you said earlier. You can take uh, take a look on the Drop TV. You can follow us on Instagram, social media, and YouTube, and we'll be showcasing this rifle up against several other variants as far as, uh, as optics just to show you really how compact this thing is. I mean, yeah. it's unbelievably small. Um, so this pork sword build right here from Black Collar Arms, I mean, it's just absolutely the perfect size for a system that's like this. This is a, this is a pistol, um, so you know it's got a brace on the back. So that, but anyways, this is uh, this is going to be the perfect type of setup if you want to run something that is compact, is small. If you're either got an SBR or you just want to maintain like the lightest weight hunting rifle that you possibly can, this is a really good optic to run with. So. Well, that's it from us guys here at Metal Ridge. So we're going to be doing some shooting here in just a minute. Like I said, we'll be bringing you some live feed info, uh, info back on this gun. So out on the range, uh, we plan on going to Triple C Tactical within the next couple of days and stretching out beyond 500 yards. Yeah, really and, see what it can do. Yeah, and see kind of what the limitations of this 308 build are. Uh, but keep up with the, all the information. We'll also be coming live from SHOT Show at multiple times over the next week. Uh, we'll be getting there on the 22nd, doing some filming, working with the guys at Greyboat and Reactor. Uh, so you can stop by the booth uh, or you can stop by USO. We'd be happy to talk to you about any of this information and go over any of these builds. But uh, we'll see you next time and y'all stay safe. See you. Oh, one other thing. One other thing right here. I know you ladies would like to see Josh wearing one of those real <laughs> tight shirts. Oh, real yeah. tight. Okay. Real tight shirt. Oh, oh yeah. I think really that is a lady shirt. That is a lady shirt. It is a lady shirt. <laughs> That's perfect.